Alejandro Pessoa from UFPI. <laughs> and he's talking about detecting the completeness of a Finsla manifold via potential theory for its infinity Laplacian. So we ask you to keep your microphones mute during the talk. And if you would like to ask a question, you can unmute yourself or either write it in the chat. So please, Leandro, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Alejandra. Thank you very much for the invitation. And it's always a pleasure to, to talk to the ICTP. It's my second time. And I, I selected this work because I didn't talk about this before. <laughs> of course, because of the pandemic. So um, I will talk about some ideas to detect completeness of some non symmetrical space like things with manifolds. And this work is in a, a joint work with Damião Araújo and Luciano Mari. They are both here. Thank you for the particip participation. Also. And uh, before to, to, to talk this, this specific theme, I will introduce this by talking about uh, some previous work that, that we have done uh, together with Pro Professor Luciano Mari. And uh, our previous idea was to, to approach in a unified way some maximum principles, uh, mainly at infinite, and uh, to use potential theory to characterize these maximum principles, at least in a viscosity sense. So uh, the ideas here are very technical, but I will avoid to, to talk in a very technical way. So I will explain roughly some things and at least in a situ case, maybe. Okay. So a classical maximum principle uh, a definite maximum principle is what everyone knows is the the classical for the calculus. If you have a maximum point, so the gradient is zero at that point, and the Hessian is negative, neg negative definite, or maybe the Laplacian if you take the trace. So to extend these ideas for a non-compact manifold or maybe subsets, you need to think about sequence, the maximizing sequence. So we have three kinds of maximum principles for, for us that may be the relevant ones for us. The Echelon, the Omori maximum principle and the omori maximum principle. So we rephrase these maximum principles using sequence, a maximizing sequence, and we study along the sequence the, the behavior of the gradient and the Hessian and the Laplacian. So this kind of maximum principle is very, is fairly studied. So for instance, the Echelon, we are going to see that uh, is related to completeness of a metric space in very general space. And the Omori, the Omori maximum principle is related to Martingale completeness. And the Yao's principle is related to stochastic completeness in somewhat. But we, we will not talk about that. Uh, our main goal here is to study a maximum principle that involves the completeness. So we select the Echelon maximum principle. It's a very well, well known result that uh, a metric space is complete if and only if it, so it satisfies the, the Echelon maximum principle. And uh, I, I choose to I choose this form to talk about the maximum principle, like uh, this. But uh, I know the, the precise statement of the maximum principle is, is not in this way. But I select this way just to, to, 
to get easy the, the way to understand the relation with the previous maximum principle that I, I showed before. So the sequence maximizing, we can see this in the first, the first statement. And the gradient goes to zero in some sense here along this, this, the, the sequence. But this, the, the echelon maximum principle is very strong. The, the true statement is more strong. And uh, a very nice, uh, very nice remark to do is, is that the, the proof of this theorem do not use the symmetry of the metric. So we just use that the distance is positively defined and it satisfies the triangle inequality. So our idea is to rephrase, in some sense, this, this kind of maximum principles in terms of some potential theory. So the first, the first idea is to rephrase using a kind of alpha's maximum principle. Let's say, if you take a, an open subset and they take a bounded from above and post it somewhere, function satisfies some inequality for a differential operator, then the supremum of this function holds in the boundary of the subset. So we can rephrase the echelon maximum principle using the, the iconal equation, but here I put a dual equation. The gradient, the norm of the gradient minus one is, is greater than zero. And the Omora maximum principle is somewhat more complicated because we need to take the maximum between two sub equations. I'm talking very hopefully because um, uh, because the, the true way I need to talk, I need to take two sub sub equations and get an intersection between them. And this is very not, not so easy to talk in a in a meeting like this. But the idea is always we take a subset, then the, the supremum of uh, a sub-solution for some sub-equation occur in the, the boundary of the subset. This is the idea for the alpha's maximum principle. And related to the, uh, just, just a comment uh, here. Uh, this is the greatest, the, the, I mean, I, I'm taking the other eigenvalues of the hashing. So lambda M is the biggest one, okay? Just a comment, a little comment. Okay. <laughs> It's complicated to use this. So uh, a more usual <laughs> property is the Louisville property. So uh, I also would like to talk about the, the Louisville property for, in the case of the echelon, uh, I, I mean the non-existence of a bounded from above function satisfying this sub equation. For the gradient in some subset. And for the Omori, we have the same, the same equation before, it's more than zero, and we have the non existence. Uh, I, I use a case, I mean, if you think about the, the Laplace equation, you just think about the subharmonic functions bounded from above. So uh, we cannot have this kind of function uh, parabolic manifold, for instance. Okay. So this is a, a very general set setting. But the main idea here is we can rephrase, think about the, the, the analytical 
Max in principles using potential theory, using potential theoretic ideas. And that, that was the, the, the main idea in the previous work that I, I have done with uh, Luciano. And uh, another property, very important in this kind of study is the, is the, the Kazminsky property. So the idea of the Kazminsky is a potential that in this case decrease for minus infinity, but we can control this, this the, the way that the, it, it decreases. And it satisfies some sub equation outside a compact set. So we take a compact, analyze the, the, the behavior of the, the, the potential outside the, this compact and the, at the same time, the, we have a, some kind of proper uh, characteristic for the, the function. The, this goes to minus infinity or minus infinity or plus infinity. I mean, so the, the main theorem that we have uh, done for these, uh, this, those previous work is the following duality theorem. The, the name duality is just because of this tilde above the, the letters F and for the equations, because we have a kind of duality. It's somewhat, uh, we, we can think about this like in the, the superharmonic function and subharmonic function, but uh, I don't like to, to do this. It's, it's not so true, okay? But the idea of the theorem is we have a duality. I mean, we change, we, we pass from a, a, a sub equation for another sub equation, but related, like sub, sub harmonic and super harmonic. And when we pass from this for the other, we pass from alphas or Louisville, because alphas and Louisville are equivalent for the Kazminsky property. So uh, we proved that for our very huge class. I, I just call here admissible, but I, I will I will show you what I think about admissible. Uh, for instance, uh, some examples of subequations that we can apply this kind of ideas is the iconal subequation involving the, the, the norm of the gradient minds a continuous function g dependent on u. Uh, the Laplacian, so the iconal is related to the Eklund maximum principle, so and, and the completeness. The Laplacian is related to the weak maximum principle that is related, related to stochastic completeness. And the Hessian is related to the Omori maximum principles and Martingale completeness. And we can study for the equations like the branch of the Mangium pair, the K subharmonic functions, and especially the quasi-linear subequations. I put an asterisk here because uh, we must take care about the, the, the this tensor this, because it's not not all quasi-linear operators. So we need to take care. We need. Uh, some bounds for the eigenvalues of the distance in T. And for at, at the end, but we can also treat the case of the infinite Laplacian. I put here the normalized infinite Laplacian, but we can do the same things for the usual infinite Laplacian. So these sub equations are all some sense admissible sub equations. So the main theorem, what is a consequence of this duality theorem, and we have, we did this in the remaining setting, involve the, involves the, the completeness of a remaining manifold. So uh, the completeness of a remaining manifold is equivalent to the following Liouville property for the infinite Laplacian. So subharmonic infinite, infinity subharmonic 
functions that do not grow so fast. Uh, here I put uh, linear growth, but uh, sometimes we just say that uh, it bounds from above. So this function must be constant. And uh, we put also here uh, an alcohol's maximum principle. So uh, infinite superharmonic function bound from above and positive some, somewhere. So the supreme of U is attained in the boundary. Okay. So just a remark, uh, this kind of relation between the completeness and the potential theoretic properties of the infinite Laplacian were first studied by Stefano Pigli and Alberto Set some years ago, where they, they connected these properties using the infinite capacity. So, uh, uh, manifold is complete if and only if the infinite capacity of all or some compact set with non empty interior is zero. And here I describe what I mean for this infinity capacity. Uh, the idea used by, by then is that I, I, we can connect the infinity Laplacian using uh, the P Laplacian equation. So we have a formal limit defining the infinity Laplacian equation and uh, the P capacity of the subsets is very well studied and we have many properties for that. So they, they employ on this kind of limit to, to study these, these ideas. Okay, uh, just to describe some difficulties that we will find for, the, the, for our setting. Uh, I, I, I have said the uh, uh, sub-equation must be admissible, but I didn't talk about this kind of properties. So two, two hypotheses are very important here. The first one is the strong maximum principle. So a function, I mean, super, super harmonic function cannot achieve a maximum, uh, a local maximum uh, interior. Uh, I think I, I, I write, I commit a mistake here, it's a subharmonic function, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So we try to do this is like this, sorry. Okay, and the other very important characteristic is the hypothesis, the, the comparison. So we have a superharmonic function, a superharmonic function. So we can compare then uh, the. I, I mean, if is u is from below v at the the boundary of some subset, so it must be below in the interior of the subset. So this kind of uh, Compares and the strong maximum principle is very important to, to study and to do the duality theorem. And especially for the infinity, infinity Laplacian, uh, what is well known, we, we can relate, we can characterize the, the, the infinity harmonic functions using the, this kind of comparisons. But uh, we, we do did using the comparison with cones. So in the case of the, I mean, the, the simple infinite harmonic functions, we can characterize these, these solutions using the comparison with cones. And with linear cones that I put here. 
And another property that is very important to study the infinity harmonic functions is the absolutely minimizing Lipschitz extensions, if you want to, to say. That means that uh, a function, a Lipschitz function, uh, some subset, satisfies this property, the Lipschitz constant of this function for every open set in this set omega uh, coincide with the Lipschitz function of this the the boundary of the subset so it's, it's a very strong property the AML property and just to recall the Lipschitz constant or some function some subset is given by uh, here I forgot the instrument of this the subset so I'm sorry again I think uh, here is the infimum, the subset. Okay, note that here I didn't put the norm, the modulus of Vx minus Vy, because I will use this definition to treat the case of no symmetric space. So this is the, the main tools that we must use to prove the duality theorem and then the, the, the consequence. And what we, we're gonna, gonna see is that some tools of like the ML, AML property, it's not available for the, the general case that we will treat It's just uh, some motivation to the work. So the first idea of us was to consider general subequations because in the, the previous work we just considered the the, the, the simplest subequation. We just consider infinite subharmonic functions. So we. We did the case where the operator is homogeneous. It's the, the right hand side is homogeneous. So we treat the inhomogeneous subequations for some continuous function non negative. And in this case, a, a good example is the reaction diffusion equation with strong absorption that corresponds to this choice of G. And that kind of sub-equations was studied by Damian and the Leitão and Teixeira in a, in, a, in a paper, don't remember the time, but uh, old paper, where they, 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 they studied uh, among several uh, results, they start some little property for this kind of sub equation. So we intend to, to generalize the previous work to include this kind of homogeneous sub equations. And another source of motivations comes from the connection between the Finsler manifolds and the Lorentz manifold. So we can relate a stationary Lorentz manifold like this uh, manifold with uh, a metric, Lorentz metric like this. We have a Finsler renders type manifold where the Finsler tensor is given by this, this equation. So it's, it's interesting because we can study the causal, the causality of the, the Lorentz manifold using the completeness of the, the Finsler renders type, the corresponding manifolds. So, okay. So to, to start the work, I will talk about some some ideas from to introduce the the a Finsler manifold. So, a Finsler manifold is a, a kind of space where we, we lose the symmetry of the space. So we can think about 
uh, geodesic issuing from a point and uh, it minimizes along this geodesic but if you return i mean connecting a point here and another here but in this way it is minimizing but come back it's not minimizing so we, we lose the symmetry of the the metric but just for defining a uh, fusel manifold we we take this function f that should be smooth at least outside the zero, the zero section and we have a, a kind of positive homogeneity uh, and a strong convexity for the fundamental tensor so a Finsley manifold is, is also a lengthy space, meaning that uh, we can define a distance, and uh, this distance satisfies uh, the triangle inequality, and also it is positive defined. But uh, as I said, it is not symmetric, symmetric. So we lose this, this the symmetry of the the, the metric, but. Uh, as I said before, it is hope, hopefully that we can prove uh, some kind of Eklund maximum principle because uh, for metric space in general, we did use that, okay? Actually, the Eklund for Finsley manifold is well studied. Other definitions uh, to define the, the the forward completeness because in, for Finsley we need to to separate we need to separate the the, 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 the words the forward and the backward uh, completeness and Cauchy sequence and everything so uh, we just we, we, we will talk about just uh, the ideas of forward Cauchy sequence and completeness, but uh, the analogic case for backward is we can can do also. So a, a Cauchy sequence is for it is a for it Cauchy sequence a, a sequence if we have this condition, but here the order of the J and, y and I is important. So we, we cannot uh, state this distance like the distance from XJ for XI. So in this case, we are treating the backward Cauchy sequence. So uh, a manifold for a Finsley manifold is forward complete, I'm sorry. If every forward Cauchy sequence converts in M. So it's, it's very interesting because uh, the forward completeness does not imply the backward one. And uh, in, in the same, I mean. So some, some special things about uh, the, the forward and backward distance. We define the forward distance like this. The distance for a, a, a point fixed, in this case is x, x is my fixed point. So the forward distance is like this, and the backward, I use the sign minus before. This is just to, what can I say? Well, it's just for, to have good computations because if we, if we didn't put this minus before the distance, we, we have problems. So we choose to do that. This is a convention in Finsley manifold. So for these uh, distance functions, we can prove a very similar characteristic for for. The, uh, for the gradient of the distance and for the Hessian. So like in the remaining setting, where we have for regular points that the, the gradient of the distance function 
has norm one in the Hessian, uh, I mean, along the vectors defined by the distance, we have the same property for the Hessian, the Hessian is zero. So we have the corresponding uh, properties also in Fins on Fins manifolds. From this second, we can derive uh, that the infinite Laplacian of these functions is zero if they are regular. But the, the problem now always is they, they are not regular, as we, we know. Okay. So uh, the main issue the main to, to, to prove, to, to improve our, the previous theorem for this kind of inhomogeneous sub equations is the lack of, uh, how to say, a, a good comparison theory for this kind of, 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 of equations and also the AML uh, property because we don't have that. So to overcome the, this problem, we define some G cones related to our sub equations. And the definition is quite technical. We, we use, uh, first consider the equation here, in things Laplacian equation and uh, we consider some solution of the second order uh, ODE and define some constants related to the function. And finally, we can define the cones here, the forward cones and the backward ones. So we will define the, the forward cones on forward balls and the backward ones on backward balls. And uh, the idea here is, uh, I mean, when we were treat, uh, studying the case of the infinite harmonic functions, meaning the, the infinite Laplacian of u equals to zero, we used uh, linear cones. But here, since g is not linear and it's not zero. So the cones must, must be different, must be nonlinear. So this is the way to define uh, the, the, the precise cone, cones that we should use. Just for, I will, I will give some examples of these cones. Oh, sorry. Before to do that, I will just explain that using that kind of cones, we have comparison. So uh, the main two is comparison with cones because using that we have comparison. So we first prove this, this comparison with cones for a function satisfying this sub equation of sub harmonic functions. We have the comparison from above. So if, a, if the function is below a uh, forward cone on the boundary of the, the subset, so it remain, remains below in the interior of the subset. And if the function satisfies this inequality, is a superharmonic function in this sense. So if it, it is above some backward cone on the boundary, so it remains above in the interior. So for, for this uh, for this kind of cones, we can compare uh, the sub-solutions and super-solutions of the infinite Laplacian equation. So we, we hope these cones are the, the precise cones to, to study the, this problem. And uh, we are not able to, to give a precise definition of a uh, absolute minimizing Lipschitz extension property using these G cones or 
this general subequation, this equation, because and, and also this is not available even in the Euclidean space, just for very special uh, functions g. So we we, we cannot do uh, a characterization like this, like a US AML, if and only if it is a harmonic solution of this equation. But uh, for our intentions, we just need some Lipschitz uh, estimates, uh, kind of in, uh, bother to interior, interior estimates. So we can overcome this problem using uh, just estimate that estimate that involve the L1 norm of the function G. So just to recall uh, a function is AML if the const the Lipschitz constant constant uh, in a subset coincide with the Lipschitz constant in the boundary of the subset. So uh, the main problem here is because when we, we stud uh, the, the simple case where the, the infinity Laplace is more than um, zero, I mean, so the, the sliding slope of a cone is well defined, it's just a constant. But here, uh, we should define some, some ideas for, <laughs> Uh, we should define uh, what means for this sliding slope. So we use this definition, uh, this constant B depending on A, because it, it depends on the subset, is the infimum of the positive constant B that we have this comparison on the subset. So uh, for all points, in, in the subset, we can find the uh, backward cone below the function and the forward cone above the function. So this is a, a kind of sliding slope for, for our cones. Just for, for uh, exemplify, in the case that G is equals to zero, the cones are linear. So we reduce to the previous case. And also this slide slope is the Lipschitz constant of the function. So we, we define a more general cone, but it is according with the, the previous one. So it's nice. For instance, if you take G equals to a constant, not uh, equals to zero, but positive, and maybe, so the cones are quadratic, quadratic cones. And uh, this kind of cones and the comparison here was studied for the infinite Laplace equations, also in some uh, Minkowski type metrics uh, by, Mohammed and Mibrate. Okay. And a very useful lemma we have here is that we do not we, we, we do not have a, a equality, but we can estimate the sliding slope. So it is bounded from above the Lipschitz constant of the function. Okay. So using these ideas, we can give this boundary to, to interior estimates for the solutions of the infinite Laplace equations involve, involving these inhomogeneous subequations. So if you Pick a solution, a Lipschitz solution. I mean, at least in the, I'm sorry. You pick a solution in the viscosity sense, 
for this equation and assume that this solution is Lipschitz on the boundary. So it is Lipschitz in the, the whole subset and we can estimate the Lipschitz constant by this. So we, we I like this inequality. The Lipschitz constant of the function uh, in the subset U is bounded from above by using the Lipschitz constant in the for the boundary plus some L1 norm of the G function. So it's very special and uh, useful for our case. Okay, so this is the, the main the main lemma for for the proof of our theorem. Okay, so I will state here a part of the, the, the main theorem because I'm just talking about uh, the infinite Laplacian, but of course uh, we have some others. Uh, equivalence involving the echelon maximum principle, and, but I, I avoid to, to put here because uh, the, the, the theorem is very big, so I just select some items to talk about. And, and also because I, uh, I would like you to, to emphasize the infinite Laplace equation because the, the iconal one is very studied and very well known for specialists. So uh, even in a Finsley manifold, we can detect the, the, the forward completeness of the space by using the potential theory. And here we, we can involve more general subequations like the inhomogeneous subequations that I was talking about. So here, uh, a fact that I, I, I would like to, uh, to emphasize is different from the, the other kinds of uh, potential theories involving the P-Laplacian equations and also the Laplacian equation. Here, the homogeneous case like uh, these sub-equations, uh, it's not different from this kind of sub-equation. So for instance, uh, in the case of the Laplacian, the, the easiest case, uh, a superharmonic function is related to parabolicity of the manifold. And if we take a Laplacian of u greater than lambda u for some lambda positive, so it, this kind of sub-equation is related to stochastic completeness that in the, both uh, bo both definitions and both both characteristics are very different so parabolic implies stochastic completeness but stochastic completeness is really different from the, the parabolic so for the infinite laplacian we do not have this kind of uh, separation we, so the they treat the, the same case so they they mean the manifold is complete not uh, they have a stochastic property so it's the first remark that i would like to do and a very interesting uh, property is that when i treat when I, I, I stud this uh, superharmonic case, I can use sublinear functions. This is the, 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 the corresponding statement for the Liouville property. But if I use a different subequation like the reaction diffusion equations like this. So we can have uh, the growth of the functions could be more big. So it's very interesting because 
according to the choice of the, the function G, we have the precise growth for the, the subsolution. So it's, a, it's very interesting for this case. It's a, a very nice difference. Okay, so just to state <laughs> this theorem because I was, I'm talking about them, all the items. Uh, the first one is a Louisville. We have a Louisville property for the infinite superharmonic functions that grow at, at most linearly. And uh, in this case, they are constant. So this is equivalent to, the, to the, this kind of Louisville property. And here we have, we have the same Louisville property, but involving the inhomogeneous subequations. And this is also equivalent to the Alpha's property. Here, and we will just read this to pass. And as I said, we have in a, as a particular case, this reaction diffusion equations, this Louisville property is also equivalent to the completeness. And this, 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 this last two items are related to uh, the infinity capacity and also do, to the, the, the Lipschitz constant of the, the, the function. So, I mean, we have the same characterization proved by Stefano Pigula and Alberto Setti. This is the same as capacity. And we have also this kind of minimization problem for Lipschitz. Okay, so just put here the minimizing property. Of course, we also have a corresponding, corresponding uh, with the Kazmin's property, but I avoid to put here because I will use several slides to put this. So uh, I would like to do some idea for a proof of this theorem, but right now I. Okay, my, my pen can return. Okay. So I think I have some time in five minutes just. I would like to, to talk about the proof because it's very nice and we will use that Lipschitz estimate that we talk about. So I, I need to change here my okay. my board so just a second please Okay, so I think you are looking for a whiteboard. So uh, I would like to, to talk. The implication three. What, what mean three? And this fashion you normalized. I think it's this. So 
Um, some subset they call the supremum of you at the bottom. So this is three, and I would like to prove that three implies. I don't know why, but my the pen is very dedicated to the completeness. Okay. So uh, how, how to prove this using just the ideas that I talked to you, have talked to you. So the, the first the first idea here is the step one. The step one is just a remark. We can, after some tricks, we can uh, we can select the function g. Because the function g in the item three is our general, so we can select the function g satisfy this property. G is non-decreasing and t is zero at zero. And also we will restrict it to the case where u The, the image of you is in the zero one interval. So what we will do in this case, so we select this kind of properties for the functions. And the idea is we pick point X in the small ball, forward ball here, and we take exhaustions. So this is an exhaustion, I'm sorry. This is on a G plus one and plus two and so on. So we take this as an exhaustion for the manifold and consider the solution of the following problem. We stud the infinite Laplace equation A equals to G on the annulus omega G minus B, where U J equals function F J on the boundary. And the idea here is the following. You pick the point, and here is the boundary of B. And here we have the boundary of omega G. And here is the boundary of omega G plus one. So the function F G J, it satisfies um, we put one here. So it is zero at the boundary of the, the ball and it is one at the boundary of the exhaustion. So we can put here, this is Fj, this is Fj plus one. So we start this kind of problem, uh, the existence of this solution is given by the Perron's method. And we have a solution uj, uj plus one and so on. So we have these solutions for the infinite Laplacian equation. And 
we have also a Lipschitz estimate for these solutions. In terms of that, what I we, we have. So this is the boundary of AG plus two um, integral. Yes, okay. So we have this. A main point in the proof that we will not talk about, but uh, it's just use the definition of the cones in the definition of the sliding slope. Is this sequence is decreasing? So using this, we conclude that uh, up to uh, the, the sequence is equilipsis. And it implies that up, up to a subsequence, we have the sequence converge to uh, infinite function and this function because of the sta stabi stability of the solutions satisfies the same equation and further it is zero at the boundary of B. So it is that. So we just extend the function U infinite uh, to be zero uh, inside of the ball and we we see that this function is a subsolution for the subequation. So we apply uh, our hypothesis to conclude that u infinity is equal to zero because it is constant, but it is zero at the boundary, so it is zero. Okay, so we conclude that, but we it, it remains to, to prove that. The matrix, the, the fins remain for this complete. Okay, to do that, as usual, we take a job desk um, like this, issuing from a some point, this point uh, X, we select a, a ball around X and we will uh, do the same construction that, that uh, we, we have proved here, we have done here. And by contradiction, we assume that T is not infinite. Okay, so what we do, we'll do, we just define functions wj defined by uj composition with gamma. So recall, uh, these functions, because they are com in composition with uj, we have wj equals to one, we can extend it by one after, well, complicated. after some tj of course less than t. Because uh, after some, some time, we have c, the function uj can be do done can be defined like that so it is equal to to one okay so to conclude just observe that wj on t wj on s over t minus s is 
less than or equal to uj gamma t minus uj gamma s t minus s. And this is less than or equal to the Lipschitz constant of uj on m. And since uh, they are globally Lipschitz, because we know that the, this, is, uh, this is bounded from above. And here we are using that s is less than t. Okay. Okay. So we let let him t small t to the big t. We have one minus wjs is as in equal to l t minus s. And this gives a contradiction to us because this converts to zero locally uniformly. And if you pick S close to T, so S close to T, so it is, should be less than one, less than a half. For instance, okay, so we have a contradiction, and uh, that's it. <laughs> we prove that the uh, uh, the, the space is complete. Okay, so come back to my presentation just to to show. Uh, these are the, the, the works that the, I based my presentation. The first one is the, the core of the, has the core of the, the duality, where we prove the duality theorem for a general class of subharmonic quantum subequations. And after we, we have also this, this work where we treat also some potential theory relating to uh, polar sets. And this is the main, um, the main work for this, this presentation. So that's it. I, I would like to thank you a lot for the attention. Thank you for your nice talk. So are there any questions? You can either admit yourself or write in the chat if you prefer. So if not, I'm going to start, but <laughs> this is not my feel at all. But at the beginning of the presentation, you were talking about Eklund principle and it was equivalent to the completeness. So I would like to ask if the forward completeness is also equivalent or to a yes, yes, principle yes. or uh, actually I'm sorry because uh, in the paper, if you look the paper and if you look all the items that we list in the paper, uh, we put the Eklund maximum principle. But uh, here I decided to just talk about the infinite Laplacian and I, I mean, uh, in the, at the final, I decided to put off the, the echelon. But uh, indeed, uh, this kind of definition for the echelon that we have done using the Liouville property and the, mainly the Alphos property, it is a, a somewhat viscosity version of the Eklund maximum principle. So the completeness is equivalent to the Eklund maximum principle. Uh, this is very general. Uh, it's not proved by a, 
by by us but for the forward completeness we have the this kind of uh, characterization using the alphas version for the echelon max completeness or the viscosity version of the echelon also we can do the same for the backward one uh, but in instead to consider sub equations we we should consider i mean sub equations like uh, super solutions i'm sorry um, sub solutions we, we we consider super solutions thanks a lot uh, are there any other questions If not, we thank our speaker again. Thanks, Leandro. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you in the next session that is on the 4th of March. Okay.